oh my gosh, I love anime. Uh, and I'm sure you do as well. Some universities that teach art somehow try to degrade this kind of art form which never cut corners, you know, whenever they do something artistically speaking, they try to go the extra mile in, in graphical aspects and story wise. So I think anime is a very valid art form which should be considered for any kind of human expression, specifically regarding either video game series. Anyways, I was watching Zeta from Grand Blue video game and then I noticed that light did not reflect on her hair and of course we have normal issues here as well and I thought well this is weird why is not reflecting why is not working like the regular shader we know now notice all, all of these black lines and also the reflection on her armor light does not cast a shadow going through her hair that's that's very stylized we know that And if you watch this animation closely, you'll see right here on her hair, you will notice that it's reacting to light, but it's not any light, any regular light, but it's just an one direction light. Okay, and here, if you can see the difference, now the light is coming from another source. And so I thought, well, this is not reacting realistically, and of course we don't want to do that. What we want is to stylize as much as we can the highlights and also the shadows on the characters that is what makes anime look anime you know it doesn't have to make sense uh, likewise of course you can do that but in video games like this you know you can see the light source the principal light source is coming from only one direction so i thought to myself okay what what are we doing wrong in the sense that I, I, I always uh, speak in plural, by the way. What am I doing wrong that I'm not getting this kind of look or that I'm not doing to get to this point? And if you notice here, her forehead has hair in front, but it's not casting any shadows. Also, her face does not change any light features. And you can see the rest of her stomach right here is not casting any shadow. So it's obvious that the light is not reacting to this model. So I thought to myself, okay, what do I need to do to make this on Blender? I mean, why can't we drive lights like they do on those games or on those anime productions? Because, you know, they are stylized. That's why we like this kind of things. So I was doing some really nice tests doing the, the back call method and also the freestyle strokes. And also I try to create a base shader to always transform the colors and that I will always get the correct shadow temperatures and the correct highlight temperatures. Don't forget to subscribe, please thumbs put up, that soldier. thumbs up for the like on the video. Now let's go back to the basics. Yes, I know it's, it's kind of a little bit tedious, but we need to do this. We need to cover this. Traditionally on 2D painting, what we do on comics or especially on anime productions, it's to have some sort of um, different layers grading in grayscale from darker values to highlight values. Okay, so this is what is expected. This is what we want to work. Uh, efficiently or at least to create the base color and what you do is to create a, a layer on top and then fill that layer and then switch that layer to color but then you get muddy colors you get uni tones that you know are not really appealing but what can you do when you get the the temperature wrong well you correct the levels directly on the grayscale values and then you get this kind of modifications right on the fly but we'll still get the monotone, uh, how can we say this, uh, we don't have any rich color value in that. We only have this grayscale being driven by the color. So we went from this kind of dark to this kind of light, because when we're painting we don't know how much dark or light we need on our 
image. So therefore, we paint on grayscale, or rather, there are different methods to paint. That's not the only one. And after that, we can go and, you know, create some post effects, which is really necessary to sell out the image as anime look, as we can see in many productions. So that's not a mystery for, for anyone. And the way we are going to do this on Blender is to first set up a base color and later on we will create a mask layer or rather a mask texture, just pure black and white, which we will use as a factor. With that factor, we are going to manipulate the color on a grayscale value, just like we did in Photoshop. And then we will multiply that value against the base value. All right. So what we're basically pursuing here is to adapt the workflow we already saw on, on Photoshop here on Blender. And the result is this. And you can see it works straight out of the bat because we're customizing, we're stylizing the shadows and the highlights. And this is desired. I really think that this is like the first basis to get your shaders working. All right, so let's get to it. The first thing we need to do is to assign all of the materials, I'm sorry, all of the objects, the same material. We want to create an atlas for that. After that, you normally would go into the paint mode with colors, but we are not going to do that. Uh-uh. What we're going to do is to create a new image, a new blank alpha image, all right? And then we're going to give it a name because we're going to paint all of the colors that will go into our boots here, but then we'll leave everything that is black to be taken from the color that we want as a base. So that way we can mix both and then the top layer will override whatever is under that layer. I'm calling the names layers so you can get, you know, kind of as an association between Photoshop and Blender. But in reality, what we're going to be doing is using a mix RGB node and then setting the mode into either multiplication or addition. Additionally, I'm creating two extra RGB nodes here because I want to drive my base color and then also the lower part of the boot. Anyways, we go to texture mode, we create a new texture, and then we are going to see it reflected here on the texture slots. So make sure that whenever you're painting your highlights or your shadows, okay, you have the correct slot selected right there. So remember, when you paint white, you're revealing your under shader. If you're painting black, you're covering or erasing your under shader. So don't forget, please, to save this as a PNG file, 16 bits or 8 bits is okay, but make sure you always mark it has an alpha channel. So now you have to mix your shadows in this way. You're going to take your texture and mix it with an RBG node mix. And of course, we're seeing the rest of the base. Okay, so that's just the base. Those two setup nodes there are set up like layers. So I'm going to use that as the base. Okay, let me get this close up so you can see it. And now I'm putting this shadow layer on top and I'm going to use RGB node into the multiply mode. All right, so here comes, here's how it starts. It's a total blank texture. You don't have anything there. Now we need to select and by the way, this one is on add because I'm adding two colors there, the base color plus the white parts of, of the boots. So let's go back to the max, mask, light, mask shadow layers. I'm sorry. Make sure you're selected there. But then you will not see it reflected on your texture slots because there's some kind of glitch on Blender and you need to uh, switch back from object mode to texture paint mode. And that way it will update. So right now it's all updated. I see my texture slots in place and I'm ready to paint. Okay. So this is probably something I, I left forgotten selected out here. Yeah, that was one. Now let's select the boot. Also, 
Okay, let's go back to texture paint. And now we see our UVs correct, correctly. And I'm using the factor from the image I'm going to paint in black and white. And remember, white will reveal, black will cover. So in our case, I want to activate wireframe so I know exactly where I'm painting. And now I will start to paint. The color I have selected for my brush is pure white. I don't need to select any other color because I'm painting a mask. I want you to please get this concept very clear. You're painting a mask, which will reveal an under color you already selected to mix. That's why you're using this texture mask as a factor on a mix RGB node. So the results should be something like this, all right? So let's get this wireframe off and the results on shadow, on the mask shadow, are looking fantastic right now. The advantage on this is that you don't have troubles anymore with, with the gradient ramp. Also, the direction lamp. You don't have to deal with all of that. I'm going to do a complete video. You, of, you of course, know this um, series, which have four different parts. We already released uh, part number one. Part number two is already on the making and three and four are already on the mix. And the advantage here is that you don't have to wrestle the ramp shader. You directly know which color you are going to interact with by painting a mask and therefore revealing how you want your mask to appear multiplied over the original image. This way you get shadows, just like in Photoshop. You just saw it, that's how it works. And so I thought, all right, so, if we have this already looking this way, how should the highlights react? Because if we want the boot to be lit from a different light source, how are we going to make those highlights, which are still, which are not dynamic, how are we going to make them react to the light? Well, that is coming in another video. I'm sorry to leave you hanging like this, but, you know, time is very short for me, and, and I really, really want to finish this model before New Year. I really want to uh, get going with the series and this is just a work in progress as you can see but the final product will have even more setups. This is just the basic setup as we saw at the beginning. So right now you can see it pays off because if you move your base color all your upper layers will react accordingly just like if you were moving the color in Photoshop. So now let's talk about the highlights. I'm going to create a new image. And of course, you saw already that highlights on Photoshop are on screen mode. So what we're going to do here is to create a new blank texture. Okay, so let's create new image. And we need the slot to be shown there. Okay, so what do we do? We create a new image right there, boot mask highlights. We select that, of course, and of course here on the shader, you need to select it as well. Your shader tree needs to reflect that. So let's select it. Perfect. And we still don't have feedback right here on the texture slot. No problem. Go back to object mode and then go back to texture paint mode. And now your slots have been refreshed. So select your boot mask highlights. So whatever we're going to do now is going to paint a mask factor because we're going to mix it with the previous layers in an addition mode, all right? So it's the same setup, RGB, set it as color one, color two, I'm sorry, color one is the previous um, ARM shaders and the color two slots in the uh, mix RGB, it's the color that you want the highlight to be. And of course, we're using the factor from the mask that is white and black, black and white. Imagine your boot being highlighted from, I don't know, a specific source because this is also stylized. So you can decide where you want your boot to be highlighted. And of course, this gives us room to paint specifically very little details such as scratches and dust details right here. Okay, so I'm painting this in black so I can munch this part of the metal you know, crunch little details there for metal wear off, which 
are going to look really awesome once we do the light setup on the scene. Because remember, we're working at shader level, please. This is not for you to, you know, just go and, and rant about, hey, it's not working for me because it's, it's just a little bit of the progress <laughs> we're doing on this side, okay? So please be patient. I know you want this completed. And of course, I do. I also want this to be completed so we can go on to the real, real flesh and bones of this, which is the animation combat. Of course, that that's that's gonna be awesome. Be working with grease pencil, all of these effects. Anyway, so you can see the boot here, and now it's got that uh, little details on the highlights. And of course, since the highlight is manipulated through your RGB node, then you can upscale it, you know, make it lighter, make it darker. I'm going to mute it and then I unmute it. And you can see right here, you're seeing your boots completed. And how you're going to lit this will come on another video. For now, this is Pierre Schiller signing off. Thank you so much. If you found this video through your related videos, don't forget to click like and share. That way other people can find it as well and you support my channel. You can help others too by clicking the like and subscribe button. We are all part of the same journey in CG production. Let me know in the comments how is it going for you after watching this in your own journey. Thanks!